Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. All right, let's get right into it. President Trump has been impeached. A historical moment for the United States. I guess he's number three now, is what we can call him. I just want to go over a couple of things and get my opinion on what I think the overall effect will be. I do not believe it'll be taken or removed from office. I don't think so. When you look at the reports and the news, which I don't really trust that much anyway, you look at the vote, I don't think in impeachment is going to help no matter what. You might get polls that go up here and there. But my concern is more with, I've been trying to think, looking through some notes I jotted down. I think I was surprised that it was only two articles of impeachment. I would have expected like nine or 12 of them. So they decided to focus on these two things. I've discussed this in previous podcasts. What do we do with all the other blatant bullshit that he's done and he tossed it aside? I would have pressed for way more articles. I would have threatened witnesses with contempt of court, well, contempt of Congress, I guess. And all the time you're fast-tracking his judges, you're approving everything, and this is somebody who you're impeaching, who you can't trust with the Constitution. Uh, All these allegations over the last couple of years since he got elected. Fine. I do believe he's a buffoon. He'll respond like a child. Hundreds of tweets, blah, blah, blah. The Republicans went with the not treating it serious to begin with. I've discussed this. But I would have, although I believe the Democrats did a better job, presented their case, focused on it, and the the Republicans just ignored everything. I think there are serious offenses that you could have brought in, taken a little bit longer maybe, shown how much he obstructs this process, and really challenge all these decisions that are being made just feels, I don't know, kind of half-assed in another aspect. I don't think it's a really good time to be happy even if you're a Trump hater. But I understand it. I understand the uh, chaos he seems to rot everywhere he goes. I could see it from both sides, I hope. But I could have seen a much broader variety of charges. If I'm coming up with a silly list, then I just, I don't know. We got a corrupt system. If you've listened to my podcast, you kind of know my views on politics, but I don't trust it in general. I have a couple of hopefuls. People that seem to want to end the corruption and do what's right for the people. We'll see how that goes towards the election. But no matter how you spin this, his polls go up or whatever, this is a kind of historic moment. You've only had, what, three presidents, uh, two were acquitted, Nixon never. He just resigned. I don't think Trump's going to get removed. However, we're in this position, he's going to run for re-election, I'm guessing. I I I could see some alternate reality uh, options here where Republicans turn on him and some decide to run for president and gain some support. I don't know. I think that would be a rare thing. 
But I don't think you're going to go around and spin being impeached for long. The focus will obviously, will can easily be obviously turned against him in almost any debate now. You, you, as much as you keep screaming, witch hunt, this or that, you were impeached. It's, it's there. So it's always going to be a constant of the Trump supporters that are wishy-washy on defending his bullshit going to finally just say, look, enough, not vote for him. It might make the true diehard supporters uh, yell louder and show more support, which is what polls might indicate. So you have an impeached president who's going to, what more looks like he's going to run for new office again. So I would have liked to have seen a real strategic, wide sweeping, evidence based, and real consequences. You get called for subpoenas, you get um, put in a position where your lawyers are defending you. Then you get special orders from the president or privileges. I think these things should have been challenged and shown to the people in a broader sense. So you would have had, let's say, eight to ten articles of impeachment. And maybe it would have been drawn out longer. And maybe there's a greater risk of it backfiring. But I think that's why someone like Tulsi Gabbard voted present. We look at the votes, 230 to 197. Uh, clearly, what they call partisan, but not to be so. I'm not surprised. That's how it's going to be. There haven't been that many anyway. She voted present, and I think the same thing, maybe in the same way, like, I'm sitting back here, and she's in Congress, and in the forces. And I'm going, how can they be fast tracking all his judges, proving all these budgets? And as the impeachment's going on, give like a hundred and twenty billion more money on top of the old budget to a president who you've just claimed has done near traitorous things. Uh you you put him in a position and you're giving him his money you look at the people he supported and put on his cabinet these are the things I would be addressing if I was to run against him in a, in a sense you got dealings that are shady that have been exposed and there are news uh, news uh, articles or stories that come out that just get way overshadowed and that's kind of another tricky part of all this politics stuff is media what do you trust? What is your What are your biases? You can't really trust any of them to a certain extent because of where the funding comes from. So you'll get true stories. You'll get legitimate uh, portrayal of the news, but you'll get propaganda. You'll get uh, uh, an agenda being driven. It's clear to me, anyway. So we're gonna get a bunch of poll showing Trump's favorable, the numbers going up, uh, his approval rating. I think it might be hyperbolic to say this is going to, this is going to backfire without a doubt. But I don't think you can get around a president who is impeached. The vote's there. Like I said, I can understand why Tulsi might have not voted present. So, as I sit back and I'm amazed that this wasn't a really full, drawn-out, evidence-based um, investigation. And, you know, I could see them having advisors and whatever and tell them the list is focused on these two. But on the other hand, it's what we're seeing is bills being passed and votes by Democrats and House leaders. And just the bullshit. I could almost see corporations and 
uh, elite or whatever twirling their mustaches like, menacingly. So I guess that's where I stand now. Um, if I'm going to be objective, yes, you did have many avenues to impeach the president. I think it was presented at least in a way where it's convincing enough. There's enough evidence here and there. And I would say, yeah, I could see me voting for impeachment. However, I would have wanted to dedicate a much broader investigation. So we got an impeached president. Let's see what his next moves are. I don't particularly see a coordinated strategy on his part that is the right move. I don't know how many right moves you can make here, except for doubling and tripling down now on witch hunt, do nothing Democrats, and dirty Donald. And that'll keep happening. Let's talk about Pelosi in the beginning saying she was not totally for impeachment, and then depending on what spin you believe, she was pressured into finally having to go forward with the impeachment. Blame it on Trump's behavior, whatever. So I guess it's gonna be an interesting election. Uh, this will be going on for a while now as they go to the next phase of this and Mitch McConnell and them already said that, and I guess it's fair, I don't know, you know get a partisan vote and impeach him, well, there'll probably be a partisan vote to acquit him and he'll remain president. I guess other things can come out of this, more investigations, but I think now that it goes to the next part, they could kind of put a squash on all that. I think the Republicans can, the Republicans can actually set things up now where there's no one for further investigations. There'll be no more evidence gathering anymore surprises that come up, they'll get it according to them over quickly, right? And if they are the rule makers here, I think they're in control. Although, there was something about holding back the articles and that might be a ploy in some part. So I think the Democrats are going to come out better in this in the long run, no matter how much Trump supporters spin it. It's a fact now, he's impeached. I don't think he'll be removed. And I still believe if you pick the wrong candidate to go against him, he can still win. Trump can still win election. I, that's why I think it's important for me, or if people value my judgment, would be to consider the non-corrupt ones, which are only two left, maybe three. Look into it. The Trump mess has been shattering a lot of other shitty shit that's been going on in politics. So well, I never got the supercharged, uh, excited uh, feelings about impeaching Trump as it draw closer and closer. I wasn't getting excited. I kind of sway with the Democrats, but the Republicans act like assholes. You have serious things you could look at. I think there could have been way more articles. And we'll see where it goes from here. Hope everybody's doing okay. Have a happy holiday. Till next time, I'll talk to you then.